people like how him bring the parliament and the country in a disrepute and him don't uh, step away willingly what's the role of the governor general in the country then can't the governor general ask him to step aside Bless up, bless up my people. Welcome back to the channel. And in this one, my people, the plot thickens as it pertains to the uncertified statutory declaration of the Prime Minister. And the IC report basically referring him to the FID and the TAJ. So right now, all eyes on FID and the TAJ, my people. But remember, yesterday in his statement, he said that, you know, he will get some consultation or some advice from his lawyer, right? As it pertains to him rejecting the IC findings, right? And so we see in Tom Tavares run out normal people and said that the IC not have no authority to refer nobody to the FID, right? So me I wonder now if a Tom Tavares a Andrew Oles lawyer. But I want to know if I listen to where Tavares have to say and they will drop some facts right after. One of the documents that accompanied the report submitted by the Integrity Commission concerning the um, statutory declarations of the Prime Minister and which was tabled in the House of Parliament yesterday afternoon is a letter from the Commission which refers to section or paragraph 623 of the report which states that the director of investigations was referring the report to the FID for quote the necessary investigations to be conducted end of quote and I'm satisfied that the integrity commission has no such authority to refer any matter to any agency or competent authority to initiate an investigation. The Integrity Commission is urging the Parliament of Jamaica to support the referral of the Director of, of Investigations, to support that report being submitted to the FID for further investigation. Now, I'm satisfied in my mind that the Parliament has no such authority. There is nothing in the Constitution, in the laws, and certainly not in the standing orders of the Parliament that would authorize the Parliament to refer or support the referral of any member to any agency for investigation. Indeed, if that power were to exist, it would be absurd because it would allow any majority in Parliament, for whatever reason, to refer any member to the police or any competent authority for investigation. The Parliament simply does not have that power, and for very good reason. And just to add my people, this is a sitting senator who is also the president of the House of Senate and who is a lawyer for decades upon decades coming out to say such things so me i wonder if this here man here don't know about the ic act with them sit down in a parliament and help create so me could drop some facts now so it states in the integrity commission act that the ic is empowered to investigate financial improprieties and issues relating to corruption, asset declarations, and integrity among public officials. They can also refer matters to relevant law enforcement or regulatory bodies, including the FID, TAJ, or the Director of Corruption Prosecution, if the investigation uncovers evidence of tax evasion, money laundering, or other financial crimes that fall under their purview. So what is Tom Tavares Fins really saying now, my people? Also, if the IC discovers that there are breaches related to taxes or broader financial misconduct that require deeper forensic or criminal investigation, it can work in collaboration with the FID and TAJ or refer the matter to them for further action, including criminal charges, tax recovery, or prosecution. So if the Prime Minister has nothing to hide, why not just invite the FID to come dig a little deeper if he has nothing to hide? 
because millions and millions of dollars transferring from brokerage places as Barita according to the IC report and SSL into accounts linked with the Prime Minister's name that he can't give an account for isn't that troubling to Uno? To all of the people that were still running out and saying that Mark Golding, this and Mark, this is not about Mark Golding. This is about the Prime Minister who stated last August that none of the members in his party that he have asked are under investigation for illicit enrichment. But he yet still went ahead and placed a gag order on all of his ministers. Isn't that troubling for somebody who holds the highest position in the land to govern the people? Em? However, my people were seeing him in the ceremony of the whole retirement send off for DCP Fitzbailey. And him basically, I said, him get Wolipa calls from even civil society and many others to find another position or another place to put Fitzbailey. And it's alleged, my people, that he plans on putting Fitzbailey at the FID, that's the Financial Investigative Division, where he was referred to via the Integrity Commission. I have never gotten so many petitions for anyone to remain in their position. I've gotten calls from members of civil society, members of the private sector, just average persons. You have developed a great deal of goodwill because he exemplifies the policies and the principles that we would all want to see in the JCF. And therefore, some persons would use this to say, that is why if it should remain, you should find every way to keep him in the force. I understand. I'm sympathetic to that view. So it would seem to me, my people, that he knew what was coming and saw him constantly a try to, you know, move 10 steps ahead of what he knows was coming. And no matter how we move around and shift around and shuffle around, you still cannot explain all of these wealth and gains where you have accumulated over even an eight year period as the Prime Minister. And so we the people are sick and tired of being in the dark. We the people are sick and tired of the corruption that has been taking over our beautiful island even from the powers that be and so right now my people we see a response from the people's national party saying that they are very shocked at the revelation of the ic report on the prime minister all right now my people the people's national party urging this manner were basically misled the whole entire country and the parliament after he knew from last year, May 2023, that he was under investigation for illicit enrichment and been saying that he don't know what they are writing to him about. So the People's National Party right now is calling for the Prime Minister to leave office immediately. The office of the Prime Minister must be a beacon of integrity, not to shield oneself from scrutiny. Mr. Holness's ongoing re guard action to remaining power under a cloud of suspicion is unacceptable we call on him to do the right thing and step down immediately his continued presence in office is a disservice to the jamaican people and our democratic system the pnp shares in the public shock and calls for accountability at the highest level the prime minister must act in the best interest of the nation and leave the office to preserve the dignity of jamaica's democracy even Emily Shields chimed in my people and tweeted something on her Twitter saying Kakistocracy, a system of government which is run by the worst, for example, Jamaica. We shall pay dearly, dearly for our willful 
blindness. And she tweeted this yesterday, my people, the same day when the report was tabled. So all of you sitting and running behind this man same way and behaving as if on a blinder than bat. Uno go and pay dearly for uno willful blindness. This message is for all of uno. We want leaders who will serve the people and serve in openness, transparency, and in truthfulness. We don't want a leader where in power and only a mind for them personal business and not care about the people and we elect them, not care about the people of the country that they are serving. And this Prime Minister is not off limits. Same like how we can scrutinize everybody else. And others can scrutinize Mark Golings and any other public servant out there. The Prime Minister is not above the law. And if he has nothing to hide, let the FID continue their investigation. Fair enough. And what I want to know, my people, like how him bring the parliament and the country in a disrepute. And him don't want to step away willingly. What's the role of the Governor General in the country then? Can't the Governor General ask him to step aside? Anybody with vast amount of knowledge as it pertains to some of the roles and responsibilities of the Governor General? I want to drop it in the comment section for my please and thanks. Governor General, come say something for that one here. Talk up my people, tell me what you think about all that was said in this video. Like up the video, share out the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Get this video to at least 4,000 likes, my people. Stay tuned for more videos, stay tuned for more updates. Big up on yourself.